one slur that we would have to stay on tape. <laughs> that's rolling, by the way. That's on tape. Yeah, yeah no, I think yeah. this is yeah. this is a great idea that we should do. What is yeah. it? Uh, just one slur for two hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, yeah two hundred grand to get us to say one slur on on stage. This but is all. Again, this is in the premise. This is in the context of the last show ever. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's it's based on a concept we invented in twenty seventeen, uh, where. You know, we had begun working three hours a week on content, and we were like, we can't keep doing that. We're going to kill ourselves. <laughs> this is too, this is it, it felt like um, the Steve McQueen movie where he rides the motorcycle yeah. out of the Holocaust. The great, the great escape. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a similar situation, right? Yeah. You know, uh, World yeah, War yeah, II, yeah, Nazis. You know, and you know what? Uh, he doesn't actually get out of the Holocaust. He yeah, gets, he gets, he gets pretty the far end. in the motorcycle, but he is returned to the Holocaust yeah, at the I, end of the movie. I thought it was cool how at the end of the movie they're like looks like you didn't make your escape and you're gonna have to keep running your book uh primo levy <laughs> <laughs> barely anybody that movie is really poorly named because barely anybody actually no that's what i love that's what i like yeah. the greatest game like, is one of my favorite coburn, movies of all time it's coburn and james garner no no bronson gets out oh, too. bronson too i think those three guys everybody else everyone else gets, gets washed or machine gun yeah they all get all the wasn't there a video game for it too which was like yeah. kind of good actually the greatest game no, video it was on PS2. yeah it was yeah like it was of, actually good it's like hard lots of tunnel digging action yeah no i've never well no it was more like Oh, we'll actually talk about this as well. But it was more just like a, like a prison. Like there was a Holocaust camp. Like, I mean, concentration camp that you were like <laughs> inside of that you were trying to escape out of, which was, but it was cool. Like it wasn't like, damn. That, now that I think about well, it, like you, that, that's never getting revamped. If you were a Brit- I mean, like, I assume, honestly. It's hero's rule. Honestly. Nazis are kind of whimsical if it's just a POW camp. Yeah, no, like honestly, like most of my favorite movies take place in World War II POW camps. And if you're, you know, an American or British officer and not like, you know, uh, a Jew or a gypsy in the Eastern Front. Yeah. Basically, being in a POW camp in World War II is like summer camp, but there's like guns. And yeah. it's just basically you and your friends doing hijinks and pranks and just having fun. Stalag 17 showed this. Someone, yeah. someone is going to fucking POW MIA your ass for this and be like, what are you talking about? We never got there. We never got the ashes back of my great, 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 well, great. I mean, well, Vietnam a little different. You know, yeah. they, they, yeah. they got what they deserve. I mean, oh, yeah, but, no, yeah. no, no. I know, but I'm saying for World War II, well, someone yeah, I mean, is going to. You know, if if they didn't die when their plane crashed, like those, all those guys just got out. They either got out or yeah. they like repatriated the Germans. <laughs> there, was, like, there was <laughs> there was of course Malmody, where a bunch of U.S. Uh, POWs were summarily executed by uh, the German army. That's uh, sort of became a scandal uh, after the war. Uh, but for the most part, if you got captured by the Germans, yeah, they would put you up. And as Stalag sh- Seventeen shows us, you get to jer- dress up like Betty Grable. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And dance around. You get to bimbo fire your friends. <laughs> yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, how do we Stalag Seventeen? Yeah, they, 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 how do we movies. find that? They were in we... captivity for like three hours, and they're like, "Well, we're never going to see a woman again. One of us has to, to become a girl." <laughs> like the seahorse thing. And of course, the wild thing is, you think, "Oh my God, this is so offensive." But the di- writer director of that film, Billy Wilder. And the guy who plays the camp commandant, Eric von Stroheim, are both Jews who fled Nazi Germany and Austria. That was, if you were in Hollywood in the 60s and they needed someone to play anything from a Mongolian to a Nazi to like a Martian, it's like, just get me a tan Jewish guy. That was the best. If you wanted to be a working actor in Hollywood, the best thing to be was like a Jewish guy who didn't sunburn. But that's like the NBA too, early inception of the NBA, right? Mm-hmm. It's like Jewish guys were cracked out there. They <laughs> the were original just, they starting were five of the Knicks were all Jews. Yeah. We used to be all the boxing champions too. <laughs> yeah. That was during the grind. Damn, era. people people are constantly talking about like oh, Jewish conspiracy or whatever, but they've kind of fell off. Like they were <laughs> they were popping off. Well what happened is this is that they were on their grind back then because they yeah. had to be, but then they kind of got soft and now they all have anxiety. They don't it's have yeah, they don't white. have enough Sigma grind set yeah, to no more Sigma grind set. No, when you become white, it's yeah, like exactly well, like, it kills well, your it, it kills your motor. My, yeah. my my I had an ancestor who is like he was like what Turtle is on Entourage for the Mafia in Chicago during Prohibition. <laughs> That's sick. That's a sick yeah. role. But um, he didn't, I don't know, he wasn't very good at it. That's all I'll say without oh. giving up too much uh, family history. But, um, you know, before we were white, we did a lot of stuff. Yeah. And after we became white, we became Noah Baumbach. It's and true. Me. It happens to everybody. Look at what happened with the fucking organized crime in this country. You had from the Italians on their grind, running that shit, being like on par with like U.S. Steel as... Uh, Meyer Lansky said, and now all their kids are like uh, uh, fail son uh, fucking SoundCloud rappers and Albanians are doing all the actual uh, like criminality because they're here more recently and they have that same grind set because they're not white yet. 
All right. Because they're not white yet. Yeah. They're on the verge. Their also, applica- their application is being considered. Also, uh, we have Chapo Trap House in the house. Hello. Yeah. Everybody. Yo. We didn't even do an intro. We're so bad at podcasting. It's not even funny. Uh, the no, legends. They're just such pros that yeah. they, they will riff on a riff of a riff. This happens every episode. Don't worry. That That's like a, it's like a gimmick that's, at this yeah, point. Yeah, we, we've built that into the show. It's a little, it's like uh, the secret word. It's opposite, the opposite, opposite way, way, Matt. Matt, I got to say, your legs are looking sexy. What? That's like, I, I don't mean to slut shame you or, or objectify you, but your Please legs do. are... We're turning him into Betty Grable. I'm being, I'm the one being bimbo-fied. Yes. Yeah. You are, you are becoming, you are being bimbo-fied. Yeah, it's California, California. Man. Yeah. That's, it to you. That's what's up. We are, we are in a prisoner of war camp from an Axis power. <laughs> you know, the, our, I mean, like, it, they, they weren't fully an Axis power, but they were like, you know, we kind of rock with the Axis. Wait, are you talking about the Turks? Yeah. No, they, <laughs> they were they like, they were not. like, oh, we kind of like this. Not nah. World War II. They, they were like, we learned from our mistakes. <laughs> they took a big they L. To keep also, everybody happy. Another <laughs> thing I learned from uh, World War II movies about POW camps: uh, being in a German POW camp. Again, if you're a British or naval, British or American officer, pretty dope. Uh, if you're in a Japanese POW camp, sucks. Oh, oh right. they, they, make yeah. you do, they make you do projects. They yeah, make you bridge, so build a bridge. Oh they put fucking Alec Guinness in a box when it's like 130 degrees outside. Not fun. They'll Not eat fun. you. They ate you POWs. Uh, George H.W. Yeah, George is. Yeah. Uh, shipmate, crewmates on, the, on his bomber that uh, was shot down in the Pacific, the ones who didn't get rescued, who got uh, yeah. captured by uh, Japanese patrols from a nearby garrison, got eaten. By the Japanese. That's because that's the, kinda ja- badass. the Japanese had no other like goals except for like winning the war and inflicting yeah. carnage. Right. And like the Germans obviously were like awful, but they had like secondary projects. Like they were like, okay, the war, we should win it. We're going to try our best. Really though, we're gonna find Santa and all our favorite Marvel characters <laughs> in the in in the yeah, in, the, South in the Arctic Circle, yeah. and also like, their <laughs> so ideology, other priorities. Their, yeah. their ideology sort of required them to treat uh, uh, like allied, uh, you know, American and British prisoners differently than they treated you know everybody to their east, because they still had this idea. Are they of, like, You know, they have kin? a whiteness. Yeah, they had a whiteness deal, and like these these are white men at the end of the day. They, and they, like, who yeah. are we if we don't treat them differently than we treat these? Non- That's wild. They though, love but the they British. They didn't give that to the Slavs. Oh God, they were so like Hitler was so heartbroken that uh, that the Brits declared war. He would have loved for the Brits to just be like, you're fine. He sent his most neuroatypical guy <laughs> to the UK yeah. and was like, go there, find 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 whoever, yeah. shake their hand and we're like we're in this together. Like yeah. white dudes rock. Yeah. Just find and, one of those like Oswald Mosley types to like just sa- talk some sense into Churchill. Yeah. Nope. Nope. You're going to jail. You're going you're going to Nazi prison. You're going to Unibrow jail. <laughs> yeah. But the yeah, they, they, they had an ideological commitment to it. Uh, the Japanese, I don't think any of the Japanese high command were even like addicted to morphine or anything fun like that. No, right? They were just doing their duty. Yeah. yeah a profound sense of, of, you know, accomplishing the task given, which is, uh, you, you got to, <laughs> I was going to say, you got to respect that. <laughs> you got to no, hand it to them. No, what? you can't, you don't need to hand it to them. Never mind. Yeah, the, the Manchuria stuff, I mean, pretty, <laughs> not good. Pretty, pretty, pretty crazy, pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, anyway, so this is a podcast where we don't actually talk about politics and not normal. We don't normally talk about World War II history either. That's too bad. It's really um, fun. Yeah. No, we I mean, finally but get we, some boomers to listen to this. Yeah. I Felix is exactly right, though, that World War II is like true crime for men. It is. It's a it's it's, it's the sort of like ghoulish interest that yeah. men occupy their time with and knowing facts about rather than just like. Well, more. I think that's generational. I think yeah. that is true for like boomers and maybe extras. I think now that's conspiracy theories. All right. I think conspiracy Ooh. parapolitical well, history, really like, like the generous. stories of all the assassinations and the coups and the sex trafficking, like that's the same yeah. prurient, like titillating sense of uh, basically fetishizing your own oppression. Like yeah. imagine being murdered by the patriarchy if you're a woman or being dominated by this like uh, d- satanic deep state uh, I, if you're a guy. And I, it's the same, but it's the same like uh, uh, enjoyment. It's the same. I feel like it's broader approach. reaching than that. Like if we were to look at conspiracy theories across the board of like the consumption of conspiracy theories, there's like, there's something for everybody though. Yeah. I get what you're saying as far as like being a man and being dominated in this, like being dominated by the structures yeah. in a way that like uh, you can't describe. But I also have listened to you talk about conspiracy theories uh, from a, like a structural materialist perspective. And I think that that is 100% 
correct. Like that's exactly how I feel as well. That this is a way to try to, uh, this is a way to try to reason with uh, realities that you are unable to to comprehend because you have no materialist perspective. Exactly. Yeah. You have uh, to build. You have a no application out of like the media shards, which yeah. is just going to give you the story the media is always telling you, which is a fascinating yeah. spectacle narrative that you uh, participate in by observing, not by engaging with. That's excluded by the by the relationship. Yeah, and then that's I mean, you get it's stuck the in same. That. It's the same as the Nazi ideology revolving around like looking for uh, some kind of mythos behind yeah. it, like, yeah. and also, uh, you know, and this is frustrating fogrums. to talk about though because all of this stuff, like the worst imagining, the worst thing you could imagine in terms of what the government has done, like, the, like if you think of like the most outlandish claims you've ever heard about the CIA, and then like scaled them back, like probably seventy five percent bulk are true. Yeah, yeah. It's there like, is. But the question is, which ones aren't is unknowable by the um, by the approach of like looking at trying to piece things together, because then you're just QAnoning yourself a fantasy narrative. You okay. can't find the truth that way. OK, question for all you guys, then, including Will. And this is a this is I, I almost feel like it's cliche now because I know Macro Dosen talks about this, too. Shouts out to PFT. I'm going to be on their show tomorrow. But do you think Alex Jones is a CIA op then? No, I th- because we aren't. That's at the end of the day. Like, because we have been accused. No, but you don't. But you well, here's don't. the thing: people have accused us since the beginning of our show of being some sort of CIA op, and a lot of, of people course. have put together very detailed linkages to make a narrative right of there. Our involvement in the state. And My the family was involved with the FBI, not the CIA. Get it right. And all they are, all all the things that you can tie together, they're at, they're basically at the same level of like uh reasoning that you use for all the other conspiracy narratives you're trying to identify in the world and you apply that rubric to us and it's like yeah these guys ring out these guys stink this is i should assume that these people are cia operatives or whatever the fuck but i know for a fact that i am not and so that means that like i know what a cia exactly but like i'm just not saying how like my what i'm up the principles i am ostensibly operating from you can like think i'm lying or you can think i'm telling the truth but like this is how i imagine it the only reason why i feel that there is some weight to that narrative is not necessarily because like oh his father was a dentist for the cia or whatever fucking grand conspiracy that like people have tried to piece together but instead about like the very real uh uh the very output of Alex Jones, which is 10% truth, like uh, being uh, talking about the uh, surveillance state, talking about like uh, all the other shady things that the government does, and then 90% psychotic uh, bullshit that... <laughs> but but isn't that, isn't that always what it is, though? But, Can I put yeah. out an idea? You guys should just randomly do an episode of your podcast where you pay three actors who look vaguely like you... And do you like the name of the podcast is like Swish a House Remix or something. <laughs> and it's what your podcast would be if the CIA tried to recreate the effect that you guys have as plants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what 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 would that even be? I guess like that would be incredible. For, for the left, it would be like what well, so they, people say Let's like do direct action if you work, comrades. If like, you what? work backward though from the assumption that the state of being the state of how things are is how the C, the status quo wants it to be. That's what the CIA and all those guys are acting towards is what we have now. If you work back from that, anything like influential in media, like Alex Jones, becomes part of a narrative that made that happen. It's like, oh, Alex Jones shows up and helps make this happen because that's what the CIA wants. Uh, and I just think that that assumption is incorrect. I think that these broader structural changes that the CIA is like moving us towards and guarding against an alternative to emerging, they are creating new conditions that are then like br- opening new like avenues that then are just filled, vacuums like in media that are filled. Like we talk about Alex Jones, the, the, his percentage of like right wing stuff has drastically increased over the years. He started off yeah. as a uh, populist and, and sort of contextually leftist critique, critic of the Bush administration. Yeah. Uh, and that went away when Trump became president. And it's like, okay, so is this the CIA like moving the dial like diabolically? Or is this somebody following the money over time? Yeah. Is this somebody seeing like there's this ambient sense of alienation at the fin the cycle America, like the 90s, everyone's anxious about the end of history. They want some explanation. He's there to give that ambient nonpartisan understanding of the world uh, a narrative a shape and that includes like uh, uh, Waco and then 9-11 and he builds this story Bohemian Grove elites that does not have any uh, culture war uh, baggage really but then 
when things get worse, pop, uh, culture becomes more politicized. Yeah. There's a bigger audience for a conspiracy narrative since the left forecloses that because the Democrats can't encor- encourage that kind of thinking. Uh, and, and leftism really forbids it also, then all of the energy goes to the right and all the audience appears on the right. People want to hear a story where their narr- your narrative of like greater forces controlling us is directed towards specific cultural grievances and enemies yeah. and no, away it's, from it's, power structures. The, 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 the uh, deep state is, is you know, shadow banning my Facebook account. <laughs> the, the, best, the best argument like for him being the CIA is actually saying, right? Because like... It, the thing you would actually want, the thing that you would get out of a right, is that people are more paranoid, yeah. more atomized, more suspicious of everything, more suspicious of their neighbors. The best argument against it, the best argument that he is, like us at the end of the day, all of us, just, you know, uh, fetid media creatures, yeah. is the revelation that he makes like tens, if not hundreds of millions. Yeah. That's true. Like it's, it's just, the audience is huge, and he's just at the fucking font of it. Because everybody else is trying to carry buckets at the edge. He's got like the main hose because he was there yeah. at those critical moments to see the time tide turning and move with it. That is his movement. It is not him masterminding a movement on behalf of a greater puppet master. It is a con man he riding reads away. The room. He reads the room very well and, and is able to, to move his And the audience material. moved right, and he went with it. That's yeah. it. And, and, and uh, that's the only way that, to me, he makes sense. And, like, even the Sandy Hook thing. Uh, if, you are, if you are forming this, like, new culturally right-wing populist uh, critique of American power under Obama, uh, and, and the Democrats are in power, and you have Democrat priorities emerging, and one of them being gun control. Yeah. And you having, in opposition to this government, a desire to hold on to your guns because you're paranoid and, and uh, alienated from your government. And you feel like that would be the removal of real power from you is to take your guns. Yeah. And then this thing happens, this event happens that is like a bolt from God of like violence like around the issue of gun control. Like the, the uh, media event of the Obama years to connect to the issue of gun control. And so you have a Democratic president leading the response to this, crying on national television. What is he going to want to talk about in response there's a million things you could talk about when talking about something like this happening. Guns is like one of the tertiary ones. But because he's a Democrat and that's all he can address, that's where he's going to direct it. And so that means you see before you this event fo- being followed by this marshalling of forces to take your guns. If you have an uh, understanding of the world that includes things like the government did 9-11, it's not a hard, hard leap to imagine the government could stage the killing of a bunch of children to pass gun control. I also think, that and then if you're going to be, even if Alex Jones and you're smart enough to know that that's a dangerous place to go, if you're going to start accusing these families of not being victims, if your um, if your readers or your listeners start, and there is an interactive call in element of this, mm-hmm. that's how he tr- takes the temperature and knows where to go. They're telling you that they don't want. They don't want you to tell them that this is the yeah. really thing that happened. They want you to reassure them that this country is basically good, guns are basically good, and that these demons. Pulling yeah. the strings are what makes things like this happen in this country. And the reason why we're seeing that more and more now, I think, is because there's a they've exhausted all other alternative narratives to it where, like, you had effective counters. You could always say, like, there's a good guy. There's a good guy that could have saved the situation. There would have been a good guy in this circumstance. But, like, there is never going to be any sort of, like, legislative prescription towards solving any of the underlying problems. And even the most obvious one that's, like, supposedly what a normal government would be able to solve, like gun control to a certain degree... Um, like common sense shit, like uh, it, they're, they're never going to do that. So after a while, I think the reactionary media, uh, runs out of options. So you have to, it, when it, when the unthinkable happens, like little children are brutally massacred. Uh, there's, I think there's just like this snap where you don't have anything else that you can say about it. So you have to say, no, this is not real. It's a conspiracy. You want to you know what's interesting? The Uvalde massacre, another massacre of children, like a, a repeat of Sandy Hook under a democratic president. There's really no narrative of a false flag there. No, they 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 because ran with it a little because bit because the pol- issue of the police emerged. Yeah, that's and true. And it gave them a redoubt to go back to without having to go to res- uh, denying it actually happened. Yeah, and they were able to stay there and fight on those terms, and then it's simply yeah, and because then, but of then the it, but then it goes back to of the police in action, and then it goes back to that's why we need to have guns because the police can't fucking defend right. us. Right, but you'll notice like this is another thing that by every other right you should be. Uh, 
assuming didn't happen. And yet everybody, nobody leaps to that conclusion and nobody argues on that territory because it's just, it's not uh, part of the, the uh, material reality of the situation, which was a result of the stochastic monstrousness of life in this country. Uh, but of course, the frustrating thing again is you talk about this and you say that this is a lot of the things that we scare ourselves with are things that we're making up. But we also know for a fact that the CIA, or I mean, sorry, the FBI has intimate contact with basically everybody who does a fucking uh, yeah. shooting in this country, has prior understanding of them. <laughs> like has that prior dude who tried, just tried to shoot up the FBI Which office. Are, yeah, would this it, would it shock you to know that he was uh, well known to the FBI? Sorry, I just got to shout out about the uh, the guy who uh, the Cincinnati tried boy. To, yeah, tried to shoot up the FBI Unbelievable office. Absolute legend, Dick, Dick yeah. Schiffer. I, I have think to, his name yeah, is. Dick I, Schiffer. God, is so good. I oh. have to shout out uh, John Dolan, the war nerd, because he said there was like a, a, a lot. The first line of this guy's Facebook post, he said, will be in the annal, like a 25th century volume of like the annals of American poetry. The line <laughs> is. I thought I had a way to get through the bulletproof glass. Turns out I didn't. <laughs> Which was oh, a nail shucks. gun. Yeah, it was a Which nail was gun. a fucking nail gun. Okay, we were we were we were losing it over this yesterday because like okay, it's it's, the glass is bulletproof. Yeah. So what what, what are we going to use to counter the bulletproof glass? A much less powerful gun. Yeah, well, that's just like, not. That, he's like he, in his mind, he was like, "It's not a bullet." When, so those, like, <laughs> when those guys are like, "We're trained," like you don't know what you're fucking with. They mean it's like something they saw in Law Abiding Citizen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's literally it. Yeah, they were they were watching like DIY TikToks. <laughs> yeah, going like going back to like certain. Today I figured out how to get through bulletproof glass. <laughs> yeah, to use, a, use a sword. Kill, killing the FBI demons. Yeah. TikTok <laughs> yeah. robot boys. Yeah, TikTok boys like, <laughs> <laughs> unboxing my SBR. <laughs> I can't wait to see what kind of fucking, like, if Trump were to be indicted, which I don't think is going to happen. I just, this, the wave of just goofies coming out of the woodwork oh, to so like, assault uh, government bureaucratic or media offices with like medieval siege weaponry. <laughs> trebuchet. Somebody's like got a fucking trebuchet. Somebody's like trying to use uh, twin arquebuses to bust open. <laughs> oh my god! They, they try to the ATF office in Dubuque. They try to do like Mongol biological warfare by like taking a guy who's seventy who's going to sacrifice himself by the, for the cause, and they're like, okay, we're going to do the worst thing to you. We're going to give you the Pfizer vaccine, and then we're going to launch you into the FBI field <laughs> office. <laughs> so you're a biological what weapon. Is he's a biological weapon. He's, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. He's, he's sucking dicks nonstop. <laughs> he's walking in there like, give me, I'm so gay now. <laughs> I can't stop. I mean, just was just like just like this morning, some guy like rolled up to the Capitol. Fired, yeah, unbelievable. Fired, four in the morning, fired a gun in the air a couple times, and then blew his brains out. Folks, patriots uh, are in control. Absolutely. Yeah. I love I love seeing like a version of the IRA with just like no like no community element, no yeah. like real no, national no chain of pride, command, no like yeah, no chain of command, no like articulated goal. Like it's well good. See, but that's where. The narrative will say that that question of uh, a goal, yeah, sure, it doesn't look like it. It looks stochastic, but what we're seeing behind the scenes is the pulling of the strings of federal intelligence agencies and the FBI because, like we Richard said, Whitmer. we it know these people have these connections. But I got to say, in my gut, trying to make sense of this stuff, I absolutely think that there is some sort of government connection to basically any like mass terror attack one way or the other because of their, their, their tendrils. Uh, I think they are in contact with all these people, and I think they do have a general bureaucratic interest in seeing these kind of uh, events either happen or be thwarted, and it doesn't matter which. Yeah. So that is why I don't think that they're calling shots. I don't think they're saying there's going to be a shooting here on this date and we're going to have this guy do it. I think they have people in the field in contact with every fucking loose screw in this country yeah. to make sure where they're, how uh, on the beam they are, which direction they're going to fall, and then maybe pushing them a little bit to get them either to getting busted uh, and then getting some guy a fucking promotion to special agent in charge, or oh he does it, and now we have another little bit of American like domestic gladio, and another and another colonel in like our national bag of popcorn popping early, so it, it's yeah. going to be popped off and not end up being no, like right, you, 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 into resistance. You see it with like you see it with like defund the police shit, right? Where it's like okay, we we recalled Chesa, or we recalled like whoever, yeah. or we're, we we're going to recall him. Crime's going up. We need a higher budget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we did it. We flooded the streets. Broken window theories. Stop and frisk. Crime went down. We need a bigger budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's always going to go up for federal law enforcement. Exactly. Under the same so logic. they don't need a broader, like, uh, 
a real plan towards some like whatever you want to call it great replacement if you're a racist or like reset however you want to frame that which is just like this paranoid fantasy of american masculinity under attack i'm sorry that's what it is it's like this this big libidinal bubble that we're all building out of our terror that we're all going to be fully proletarianized yeah and that's the expression of it but uh i just think you cannot i don't think that the neoliberalization of institutions in this country uh, uh, spared our intelligence uh, community. They oh, got yeah. neoliberalized. Oh, yeah. there was, there's no longer just the CIA and the FBI. There are 30 different fucking uh, intelligence departments, all of them with their own bureaucracies, internal hierarchies, uh, institutional prerogatives competing against each other for funding. And they all issue 1099s. They're all using contractors. Yeah. Those are the people that turn Virginia exactly. blue. Exactly. And it's all being funneled through private actors yeah. who are probably on multiple contracts from competing fucking organizations. But I think that's so part that of the, this. But that's where you, you see the, the failure, too. What I'm saying is you get the same result, which is people being driven crazy by living in this fucking country in a violent, saturated, gun-infested hellhole, uh, uh, reaching their limit and then doing something about it. And, all, and the only difference that this like, uh, um, understanding of parapolitics when placed on top of that has is to let you know, oh yeah, like this specific guy ended up being the guy who did it because he was in contact, he had like this interaction with this agent here, but they're all in interactions all the time. Yeah. And eventually they could fall off in one direction or another, but the thing that's going to pull them off the beam is gravity. But that means that we are just where we were before. And so the same questions are before us and they're political questions about holding power. How do you do that? The idea that you're going to change anything by making people aware of uh, conspiracy theories, proving them, is insane because you already have millions and millions of people in this country who believe the most radicalizing stuff about what this government has done and is capable of. And what are they doing with that understanding? They're just trying to tell other people to believe what they believe. But if that happens, what are they going to do with it? The same thing that you did. Just tell other people about it. Yeah, that's a, do you, this is such a perfect segue into what I've been looking at on my... I, I, I did a did a whole like YouTube react series on this. I call it like hog talk, but um, there are militia members and like some of them are legitimately in militias that they form, but they're the funniest and dumbest fucking militias of yeah. all time. Um, and basically like what you're saying is exactly true where at the end of it all, you got like a 45 year old divorced dad who looks like he's 68 Okay, just absolutely, uh, you know, wearing a fucking hard hat, probably on his lunch break. Okay, talking about how, you know, we got to do something. We got to do something. And where does the fucking where, where what is the call to action there? Hashtag like, you know, uh, duet me, duet my TikTok. And like when you got the fucking Arkansas, you know, white nationalist militia guy saying just duet my TikTok, it's over. You're done. You're done. Well, that, that, okay, you know how everyone makes fun of like that online like ML or like sometimes anarchist thing of like what are your jobs going to be after the revolution and everyone's <laughs> yeah. like i'm going to be a psychiatrist for people who are traumatized by capitalism i'm going to be a designer for the uniforms for the red army yeah. i'm going to make communist hamilton and it's it's no one no one is like i guess i'll figure out irrigation or I'll like try to do that i'll be like a bean farmer everyone always wants like some type Anime of like artistic, artistic media performer job at the end of the day. Yeah, that's the only thing Americans. I'm want. a anti-capitalist, are, anti-capitalist film critic. We, we are <laughs> all, we are all of us anime appraisers. But that, that, that's everyone. Yeah, because like everyone. The, these guys are like, okay, what happens after the Great Awakening, where we hang everyone from General Mark Milley to like, um, I don't know. Uh, uh, Vivian Westwood, <laughs> or the fucking. I, I, I don't know why. Westwood? I don't know why I picked that as a celebrity. Yeah. I was trying to pick yeah. someone American, and I or, landed or, on or that even one. Like a, the, the fucking brown Starbucks barista that like miss like wrote your name wrong or I, something. I don't know why I said her, but um, they're like after we do that, my role is still going to be. I'm going to be what I am now, which is member of the media. Yeah, everyone, everyone yeah. wants that. Like people think. I think everybody assumes. People who believe in like, uh, yeah, the consciousness raising through through narrative, theory of change. So you get yes, yes, and you get okay. Fifty percent of people might believe that Kennedy was assassinated. Nine Eleven is an inside job, but that's not enough. You need it to be seventy five, and that there is a threshold. And I think that when, I think that is uh, uh, an artifact of the human brain not understanding what the technology has done to it and how it has desocialized us. Like that. <clears throat> call to action from knowledge gets dissipated if it is only understood and interacted with in this this spectacle that like you're ad essentially addicted to yeah. which means that there's no amount of horror that you will find out about that will change your relationship with it some you have to change your material relationship to the world around you and that only happens through collective endeavor people acting together 
uh, in, uh, around shared material goals. And that's there's it. no mechanism. That's the there, only there's one. The, the, the and mechanism. you can't talk about it on shows like this, but it's the only thing that moves yeah. the wheel. And, and the mechanism for that kind of change historically has been completely undermined and eviscerated in America. So there's no labor union structure or exactly. any sort of like, like workers' council. So well, yeah. If I, if I could make a slight digression, and I know, I know we said we weren't going to talk about uh, politics on this show. We're going to yeah. do some TikTok stuff. We're going to just be fun and goofy. But there's a serious issue I'd like to present as it relates to collective action, something I think that we as Americans should uh, take seriously, that I'd like to use um, your platform to uh, spread awareness about. All right, let's and do that it. that is my blood vendetta against the government of Norway right now. Fuck those motherfuckers. And, oh, yeah, okay, I heard like, it. Did you follow the story about Freya the walrus? Can you pull up uh, yeah, Will's... she's sinking boats. Bo she's sinking boats in Oslo. So what was the Norwegian government's response to this delightful animal? Can you pull up Will's Twitter? To let her sink Taking up boats. residence in people's this boats. This frolicsome queen. Yes, this, this absolute queen named after a Viking goddess. What they do? Uh, they killed her. What? Yep. When? Today. 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 This is Today. the Scandinavian Harambe. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the Scandinavian oh. model. They said uh, be, they said we killed her because moving her would be too difficult. And to that, I say to Norway. Well, they let her sink <laughs> like twenty boats. Well, I mean, just, they or, 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 just get like some more her. boats. It's an accident of God that you people <laughs> yeah. have oil. You were the hicks of Northern Europe, it's and true. then God gave you oil, yeah, and you're true. like, oh, did, he's also telling us to yeah. kill this delightful wall. They, I wish you never told me about this. <laughs> it's so fucking so, sad now. look, uh, my, my, you know, I, I am like George W. Bush with the megaphone right here. I'm saying, like, the, the Freya fans, we hear you. And the people, and who they killed have oil. Her, the people who killed her, you will hear from us soon. So I'm, I'm calling for American boots on the ground in Oslo humanitarian or walrus you know, a sea mammal humanitarian intervention here. The people, the government of Norway, I don't, there are no military or civilian targets. They are all guilty. Oh, 100%. They are all guilty. I'm not, you know, this is, the U.S. Air Force should just level us. Further, further reasons for the military industrial complex. They kind of did an Iran style nationalization project that was successful. We let them get away with that. That's fucked You're up. You're right. They have they have a fuckload of natural resources that they got to keep, which is yeah, wild. that they got to keep. And on top of that, they nationalize it, which is pretty communist. I oh, yeah. feel like they should be taken down a couple. Of I mean, they, they would they, not they, have been they, allowed to do that with their oil if they were not in Europe. Yeah, one hundred percent. World's best living writer, Carl Overkos <laughs> Kuznard. Here we go. okay. No, who's who's who? Feel like he was actually better? the one. He was the one who beheaded Freya. <laughs> okay, okay. He's ace of spades. Then he's he used, the top of the thing. Top of the fifty-two. He used a Zweihander. We're, we're digging. <laughs> we're, we're going into his little Saddam hole. Into Carlo's little Saddam hole, where he's writing we're volume smoke him out. forty-seven. His book, though, about his trial, the the end of my struggle. His trial, where he's um, hung for executing Freya. Is going to be the best book ever written. <laughs> Forty-eight he's gonna volumes. Writing, he's going to be writing it up until the, the, the trap door opens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, people have light no. and darkness in them. But but seriously though, Norway, you fucked up. Yeah, you're on the list. You fucked that up. That is crazy because the last story about it was like kind of how cute. Yeah, and everyone girl. loves everyone loves oh, Freya. She's sinking boats. That they is kept trying wild. to build her rafts too. Yeah, well, I mean, just let let my girl cook. Let my girl cook. Let my girl cook. I think it was nature telling Norway to cut it out. Like that's what that's what it was. It was nature's vengeance. Norway, look out! Even if the even if American military intervention doesn't happen, which it should, we we'll um, put a boot in we their are ass. On board with it's that. the American way. Yeah. I wonder what boat she was trying to sink that was finally the coffin nail. Yeah. Mm. It's Some probably one of the oil tankers yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like nope. <laughs> you can't no, yeah, you can, sink, you can sink everyone's you know uh, like party pontoons. Yeah, but, but as, as soon as you, you down jump a, on a tanker, teak wood, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 it wild. R.I.P. Freya. It was a crucial loot loot kafisk consortment. <laughs> you know about that stuff? Oh no! Oh, yeah. Fucking uh, oh god damn it! What's it called? There's another. You're talking about uh, it's canned it's fish, right? Fish. It's, no, it's fermented. It's, yeah, it's fermented. It's fish. the worst. I've it's I've had disgusting. it. I've had it. It's uh, great. I, yeah, no, I've been to I, I I have been to Iceland. I haven't been I, and I had there. Um, I had there like a. I went to a traditional restaurant that served traditional Icelandic food, and it had. Uh, there was some good stuff like there was lamb and like really nice bread, uh, but they also had this. Uh, had good food in Iceland. Well, really? like some of it, but like the traditional stuff. The more traditional you got, the grosser it was. Yeah, and like they had this thing, this mink whale that they eat, <laughs> uh, and it just tastes like kitty litter. It's just like pure ammonia. 
It just oh. it blows my fucking mind how there. I mean, none of those. The, you have to be from a warmer climate to yeah, eat gross. like decent food. Yeah, it's, it's just true. fast. Yeah. It's true. Well, they produce giants, so they must have been doing something right. I'm fine. Well, with, they were protein bulking us. Yeah. yeah, they weren't dicking around <laughs> with carbs. Yeah, you can you can do that and still they eat like They basically had the rocks food. diet natural. Yeah, three, yeah. three, three pounds yeah. of cod a day. Three pounds of cod a day, baby. Yeah. And yeah, it was just fermented and salted, and like they had this. One other thing I had it was this dried. Uh, uh, it was like dried cod that they would like eat in the winter, and I was like, "Oh, cool! Like, I think this might be some sort of like a um, a kind of primitive fish jerky, like maybe like salty because it's preserved." It was like fucking shoelaces. It was like totally oh. flavorless, totally flavorless, and just like a rusk of like uh, like the the uh, shit you peel off a of corn. Like a, a you know? husk? A husk. Yeah. Oh, man. It was, it was like a husk. It was I like would literally chewy. prefer not to have socialized health care. Uh, like, like, if they gave me the option, I'd be like, no, nah, <laughs> if I, you, you only need to eat this yeah. fucking cod. I mean, cod. they have normal food there. They no, love hot dogs this in is, Scandinavia. This is yeah. the, 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 and they, they're very good, by the way. I'm far pref- they're probably my favorite type of hot dog I've had, that honestly. The, one too? Um, Just make sure the Iceland good. hot dogs are really tasty. They have, like... The sauce on it's really nice, like little crunchy bits. It's really good, much better than the Chicago hot dog. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Whoa. Whoa. But no, oh, shit, Whoa. Iceland fighting. Oh, that's man. well. Oh yeah, like fucking shark cartilage and no, like sea live ball hot dog. It's a good old regular pig anus hot dog. It's just got beautiful fixings. No, they just they saw an American and they're like, oh, uh, don't like don't give him the one that's made out of like icebergs. Yeah. <laughs> which, like, which viable, we always viable eat. steel fetuses yeah. <laughs> which we always eat and love good. that's yeah. what we love to eat normally yeah, no, the, I, yeah the, the the freya saga is the uh conclusive demolition of the uh the, the nordic the, the, model the nordic model is dead matthew bruding in you know, fucking shambles yeah, right now say, say what you will about america but like you know, like uh, in San Francisco, like that the the place with all the sea lions. Yeah, Bishman's like if we if like if like our, it'd be a cool one if they just like flew an Apache helicopter over that <laughs> and just, just sprayed it with fucking Gatling guns. Easy, you just don't lead them as much. Yeah. Imagine like imagine an A ten warthog just straight, <laughs> just, just straight like cannon. Gun, just, <laughs> Oh, that's sad. That Matthew Brady has been suspiciously quiet since the Freya news drop. Yeah. His silence is deafening. <laughs> Oh man, I'm bummed out now. <laughs> that is yeah. sad. <laughs> um, okay, well, we can move on from the the sea lion, the, the death of, of the oceans. sea lion. Yeah. One thing I want to talk about. What? It's very interesting that the last time we were all together, we were in a bar at a period of time that felt like mm. one yeah. last good celebration yep. before oh, a, God. a pretty notable decline. Yeah, that yeah, was okay, yeah, in Vegas after the Nevada caucus. Yep. Yeah, we were there at the, the Bernie victory party. It just yep. washed everyone by 30 points. Yep. And it had rained in Vegas. Yep. And we were at this party and I sw- there was a rainbow. There was a rainbow oh, behind the, the fucking bar. And I remember just like, you know, COVID. just like, you know, <laughs> just like grabbing Matt and Felix and going, friends, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't it like, wasn't it a fucking like, in between, it was the back of the bar and then it was like a fucking like playground. There was like a swing set or something. Yeah. Or am I remember, or forgetting that? But, but well, anyway, like, yeah, there was a f- perfect rainbow behind. I'm getting fucking, I'm getting fucking goosebumps. Okay. Thinking about okay. It. That was like good. I, that was good. <laughs> totally okay. Don't you think it's interesting that now that we're all reunited, something even better has happened? The President Biden is going to sign the IRA. That's right, baby. Dude. Dark Brandon <laughs> rises. Yo, yo we've yeah. got a fucking climate bill, y'all, which is all tax breaks for individual consumers, <laughs> and yeah. all of it is balanced with new natural gas yeah, and oil we, drilling. Man, we were in the pool yesterday talking about the Dark Brandon thing, and it was so funny because, like, I mean, when it started, it was kind of funny because, like, the idea of like that you could connect um, any event that happens in the world, like you know, like uh, like some Jack and on. We so, basically some, some, invented yeah, this so, thing. Some, yeah, as a yeah, like, uh, like we liberal didn't drillers. The name, but we invented yeah. the concept. Honestly. Some some mega guy, Another, like again. you know, like crashes his car into a divider, and then it's like dark Brandon rise. Because like the joke <laughs> is that like someone as doddering and incompetent, yeah. just someone as out to lunch as Biden would be, like secretly orchestrating like all world events and assassinating his enemies. But now that it's been adopted by people who are like. We just passed the Inflation Reduction Act. <laughs> Biden laser eyes glowing. Dude, like, dude, I they, hate Dude, they, I hate no, it. They neoliberalized like, it. They literally <laughs> took, co-opted a fucking meme and turned it into a yeah, marketing well, all, material. All memes, all memes yeah. co- co- co-opted, you know? Yeah. I just, every time, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like this is like, maybe, maybe I sound a little crackhead saying, but I feel like, you know, we'll start a joke that's fun, like jacking on. Because, yeah, the idea of a man who's literally dying 
doing like even even like him signing bills because you know they're not giving him a real pen. No, no, um, is hilarious. Uh, and then yeah, it gets filtered. It goes through the Brita filter of content. The, the little sediment, the thing that makes water good, yeah. the edge gets taken <laughs> out, and then eventually. <laughs> 18 months later, it ends up in the hand of a guy whose display name is like Joshua. Let's let's uh, start the tree tax break. <laughs> Gormix, who's usually talking about zoning codes, is like, oh, dark dark Brandon just uh, had a just ended the deferred tax loophole for insurance companies that are chartered in Connecticut, and it's like. <laughs> I'm going to use a nail gun to enter your townhouse. <laughs> I'm breaking your bulletproof glass. You I think this fuck. whole this phenomenon though with like the actual White House staffers posting but dark branded memes, uh, and then people pointing out, hey, you know the original uh, video that made this meme included a son and Ron behind uh, uh, Biden's head. and like this is like from Channer fascist culture that you're yeah. started getting this thing from. But of course they don't know that. Yeah. They just think, oh, cool thing. Uh, hey, guys. And they're trying to vaguely gesture towards a media, an audience that they perceive but have no understanding of, which is just the mass of people on the internet. And that makes me think that this is a real piece of evidence undermining the thesis that like, the Trump presidency and administration is like a self-conscious like, fascist uh, movement. And p Because a huge part of the evidence that's supposed to mm. support that is all of the dog whistles and references to movement shit from people like Trump, like talking about where we go one, we go all and mentioning QAnon stuff going all the way yeah. through the administration and politi politicians. They're all like gesturing toward this. But what are they doing? They're doing the same thing that these dopes are doing with dark brand. Yeah. They're seeing just the churn of the Internet from this pe these people that they do not understand, but feel beholden to in some way. They see what they're talking about and they're like, that's right. Um, yes. Uh, Bill, uh, yeah. Uh, where we go all. Yeah. Uh, that's where we are. And then you have like one or two like based groiper interns that like sneak yes. in like a 14 word reference every now and then and, and like, then everyone's like that's it so like, look at ask that ask yourself if you feel like you're part of the dark Brandon community in one way or the other you know yeah. you feel like you're participating in this fucking dark meme Brandon think of how community. much influence you have over the Democratic Party well, yeah. Doesn't it stand to reason that they don't have that much more influence over the Republican Party as well, they're, a massive they're, they're, differentiated posters the Republican goals overall of like uh, you know that, that like they're don't, more coherent. But, like the, but they don't the undermine is, it's the party structure itself moving it that way. They, but they don't undermine or or offend the pre-established hierarchy, so they can get away with like a lot more. Right. They yeah. have a lot more leeway to just like be brutal to to people that are otherwise powerless. Yeah. So it does feel like you're actually like the thing that leftists or liberals, progressives on Twitter get from like I don't know canceling a show or making sure that like a voice actor is not like one tenth Cherokee or whatever. That is the kind of feeling. <laughs> That's the kind of feeling that uh, that I think Republicans can sometimes get, like you see with the Roe v. Wade decision, because it's ultimately not impacting uh, or undermining the pre-established hierarchy that right. will continue to yeah. continue to ruin everyone's lives. Yeah, but it will like it will accelerate like ambient hatred, and that's I think what yeah. people are feeling. They're feeling like, oh, it, there is actually a higher risk that I am going to encounter some sort of like violence from somebody politically from the right, and. They, that's in absolute terms probably true, but their sense of danger is wildly uh, escalated by their consumption of media, which makes yeah. some things much loom much larger in their minds and therefore like uh, 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 stain their association like with every interaction in their life. Like it's it's psychically over large in their mind, uh, and then they call that like this generalized drift of fascism. But it's an understandable like psychological reaction to a real ambient sense of dread that everyone feels. And is expressing differently. I'm so glad we had Minecrafters on the first episode. And then now, like, by yeah. the by the fourth episode, we're, this is what we're talking about. All these, like, fucking little, uh, little queer teenagers that are like, oh, yeah. Like, I love seeing influencers talk to Hassan and Will are going to be yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> the, the, this podcast has been fact-checked by the Dark Brandon meme squad. Yeah. 100%. What are you so, say? So, I keep cutting you off. Like, that is... Okay, one of our hard and fast rules is that... Every American who is actively invested in electoral politics is the same person. Yep. They're the same person. Fair. It is the Civil War. It's brother against sister. It's based brother against fucking dark brand and sister. It's, it, it's, they're the same sickos. And you see that in that, like, okay, before dark Brandon, you had based Mike Lee. Mm -hmm. You had shit like that. You had, like, a guy who has been in the Senate since 1986. Like, people like that. 
And yeah, they would have like a griper staffer and they'd be like, oh, um, guess what? Senator Richard Shelby just passed a bill giving tax allowances to uh, companies that make laser guided, guided missile systems in North Carolina. That's based. Give him laser eyes. Yeah. As lame and try hard as Dark Brandon. But Republicans do that so much better. That's why you see, we've talked about this before. That's why you see at QAnon rallies, like a, a fucking Republican, like, uh, you know, California Senate uh, a candidate that's not even going to fucking win, go out there and then tie QAnon conspiracies directly back to like, you know, defunding public education. And you're like, what the fuck? School choice? Why are you talking about this right now? Like, talk about the pedophile stuff. And then they they are able to still, like, take that. They look at, like, genuine grassroots uh, movements, a genuine reaction to the anger that people feel on the ground. And they have their ear to the ground, and they're able to, like, still turn it into a better marketing tool to, to you know, uh, consistently have uh, enough angry people to go out and vote while they're also simultaneously making it so that, like, 10 people fucking vote anyway uh, on the on the, like, electoral side. I would say they're more successful culturally because QAnon is like it has the advantage of being like a, a participatory collaborative fiction project. Yeah. And it's uh, also yeah. validated by being uh, unspeakable, uh, like an unspeakable option in mainstream media like that validates. It. Yeah. Like if you are fully alienated from mainstream media and people and that is a lot of Republicans are obviously, but that's not just Republicans. You know, there's this oh, yeah. generalized greater understanding that I don't trust anything that I see in the media. If something is universally branded by the media in unison as a disinformation or a lie that is going to legitimize it uh, just prima facie for a bunch of people. Yeah. And, then that give, and then that gives you like a buy-in. And then you start hearing the story and it's this compelling narrative that fits all of your understandings of like how to make sense of your world from the media that you've been consuming your entire life. And then ultimately some Republican turns it into a call of action to like defund public education. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you, you're already homeschooling your children. So you're like, yeah, I fucking love that. It still goes uh, through that Republican talking point mechanism and, and ultimately uh, serves the higher purpose of like undermining the federal government's powers that already fucking sucks. And, you know, these guys are just like at gunpoint stealing your taxes to fund the military industrial complex. And like, why are you giving them money? And they're also trying to bimbify your children now. And if you want more of this hot QAnon action, you're going to have to get behind that paywall because we're an hour in. So, yep, sign up now. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we'll we'll let before we before we turn that before we uh, do the additional paywall stuff. Um, let's let's end it on a on a high note. I wanted to give you guys a gift. First oh, of all, ooh. are you guys familiar with Bella Porch? Bella Porch. So this is what I wanted to show. I wanted to show you guys like Are my. You saying she's a porn actress? No, she is not. <laughs> okay. No, she is a uh, TikTok star that rose to prominence after her very successful. We have to show yeah. what this is. There is no other way to do this. You got to find. I, I like that people just assume that anyone you associate with is, is a porn actress. I, 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 I like that her name is like someone challenged me to name my imaginary girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just looking at stuff around me. Yeah, so Bella you gotta find the original face one because like this is the reason why she popped off, right? And by the way, I know her personally. I'm not like making fun of oh, her. She's, she's great. She's a wonderful person. She was on yeah. uh, your show uh, yeah. this week alongside myself, Name Your Price. Um, but I want you guys that are completely nah, just super in, separated, Billy, super far removed from like first TikTok. this incredibly viral shit to, to give like your first, uh, you know, we're getting porch pilled. Okay, yeah. You're, yeah. yeah we're, I'm, you're about to get on the porch pill and then I'm going to tie it into something. The, the one where it's like, the bees, mm, mm, the bees, yeah. yeah. First TikTok video. You've never seen it. Yeah. Well, we gotta, we gotta fucking fire this guy. Oh, Billy we need a, we need, we need like an actual 20 year old. Younger. We need someone oh, younger. God. You need oh, a fetus. That's it. That's it. Yeah, pull that up. Jamie, no, pull of it up. Not. Hey, yeah. you right. pulled it up at the last second. We have no volume. Oh yeah. I wonder if it's because you have it in your mic or not. Bella Porch, P O A R C H. I would yeah. have never guess it. Spelled her spelled. own last name. No, I, don't I, no, know I think that's the. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna take her word for it. Yeah, it's through the headphones. Yeah, put it on real tech. Perfect. She's just spelling from the top, from the top. The B, Sam to the B, is M, 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 M to the B, Sam to the B, Sam to the B, Bang. Nice.
So that video so went bananas. <laughs> okay. Like that video was everywhere. It was like inescapable for what? if you were under the age is of like M to 30. The B? What is yes. it? What is she referring yeah, to? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a song. Okay. It's not her song. Oh, okay. It's just another song. <laughs> it's okay. someone else's song. So this is getting back to the question of like why um why it's so sort of logical in a way to assume that everything is string pulled and every cultural phenomenon is a work because it's the only way to make sense of something that is otherwise totally incomprehensible, which is why these things become popular. I do not understand. I can't, only retrospectively can you even try to create a narrative and at that point, you're too far from it to even feel, really well, feel it, it anymore. I think it's like- In the moment, I'm just baffled. I think it like appeals to like this weird sense of, I don't know what it is. It's like almost the primal. It's just like throwing shapes, colors. It just like fit perfectly because it was, it was very captivating for no fucking reason, right? And it blew up. And then she blew up, and then she was able to uh, well, create I think TikToks a little simpler than all that. It's listen, earworms, right? They happen. Mm -hmm. People have invented apps that are now on everyone's phone, Shazam, to go find a song. TikTokers tapped into very early on obscure music. You identified that that song was pretty catchy very quickly, putting it That's as true. their sound yeah. and then reproducing it, creating a nice visual for it. This is a music video in seven seconds, right? Yeah. TRL yeah. Yeah. is a phenomenon that we could all explain. Now condense that to an ADHD. Okay. I, see yeah, I, got it. Yeah. I think that's a very good that's explanation. A very good explanation this of TikTok. is what, this yeah. is what a, the equivalent of a, like a really good, like say a Beastie Boys music video yeah. would have been for someone with a longer attention span. Exactly. It's like, we don't have time for all this narrative shenanigans. We have a beat and we have like yep. something that could just start in your head and then carry on all day. We, yep. we literally should make it so that you can't get it like, an iPhone until you're 35. But that is literally like if there's any piece of legislation that I could pass that would instantly have a positive cultural and societal impact, One it million would be that. Percent. One million percent. Yes. But what again, we're back to conspiracies because it's like, all right, you can explain the broad content concept with these are earworms. These are things that uh, appeal. But what another thing I can't answer after that is why these specific ones. And then you get to the other explanation. They are the MK Ultra triggers. Those are the ones that become popular. <laughs> Because those are the ones that are like literally setting off people to do mass shootings. Because otherwise, I don't know why this specific bump noise is better than the other ones. Because there's, aren't there five billion of them every second? Well, Bella sent me a, uh, Bella texted me. Is she the daughter of Mr. TikTok? Is that what no, it is? No, no, no. Bella, Bella texted me uh, around my birthday. It was like, what's your size? Like, what's your hoodie size? And I was like, uh, you know, triple a or double XL. And I thought like she was sending me a, 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 a birthday gift. And I think she did, but she just recently came out with her new EP. This is not sponsored by the way, but I, but I thought it would be very fun to uh, have uh, you guys go through it and have your pick of the litter on right. Ooh. your Bella yeah. Porch merch, which includes, and is not limited to a Funko Pop. Oh, Ooh. baby. Yeah. I so you have, got the postcards? I have one Funko Pop already of uh, of Muncher. So you guys get to pick one so of these I, when items. I, when, I get my, when I get my car, I'm going to put this on the rear bumper and get shot immediately. <laughs> the 30-year-old man with that on there? Yeah. Uh, I, think, there's I, think an take, I think I'll take the hoodie because I, I mean, unless you guys want it because I, I well, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and pop that yeah, on? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> for the premium. Yeah, you don't have to wear it yet. That's for the juicy content. I will now, if I, if I get the Funko Pop, I will officially have two Funko Pops, which is two more than any man. There you go. I have one. I have the Morrissey Funko Pop. Right. I think my friend Aaron sent it to me. Oh, shot. I no, I, I really do. I really I do. I have a Funko Pop. I have it's on top of my tower. I was given a gift of Muncher wow. as, a Funko, as a Funko Dude. Pop. Dude. This. Okay, that's not bad. That's drippy. Oh, that's drippy. That's a, that fits. You look like... <laughs> One of the, like the shadow producers at uh, No Jumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 M to the B, M to the B, yeah. M to the B, M to the B. This guy's a Thank wizard you, with trends. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys about TikTok uh, specifically is because like I sometimes I like I mean first of all I just got fucking banned for seven days for no reason. They're so annoying, but their community well, guidelines are I awful. I think you pilfered my content. Was what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, but one of the things that I see so frequently on it is like TikTok live streams. And I don't even know if we can pull it up on the desktop, but I want to show you guys the madness because it is basically turned into a never ending sequence of like either QVCs, but for crystals, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's like truly fascinating the way that it works. Um, you can use the, the, the volume button on the bar on the side to like lower to zero if you want. 
TikTok, then, yeah, TikTok. I've seen some TikTok lives um, that people have posted, and like the difference between TikTok live and like even Instagram or even the dreaded Facebook live is TikTok lives. It seems like that's the one you do. Before what is you happening? Your what family. is going? Okay. Is so going this on is so this is like a very uh, common one where you have this like random lady. Okay, there's always I don't know where the fuck they filmed this. Okay, but there's always like a random lady who is going through this like bubble bath of crystals, what? and people are constantly purchasing crystals, and it's basically like gambling, where you know she just dips a fucking bucket. You'll see it in a second. She'll dip a bucket into the to the weird like bubble bath of crystals and and you pay for like a you know two scoops or one scoop here you'll see it right now what would conspiracy theory say about this shit right here <laughs> it's like so she's they, making rock gumbo <laughs> yeah no literally look 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 and then she's gonna describe the crystals all right She's a little low energy. I, lo I, lo I love how we're going back into like we're trying to backwards engineer alchemy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like my conspiracy thing about this is I would say one, at, you know, m most crystals are bullshit, but I would say one out of every hundred one of these crystals contains like some evil, Deep dark power, and true energy, evil, okay. true evil. Like, you, know, you don't uh, think that, so? You're saying there are no good crystals. Well, I mean, like they're, you're, they're, you're they're, with the uh, you're with the Christian fundamentalists. Yeah, then, that they're demonic inherently. Well, I mean, most of them are just rocks, but uh, one out of every thousand. I would or say so. I would say that if a if a crystal can be charged with dark energy, and I think you know I believe in a lot of bullshit. I'll just accept that. I think I don't see any reason why it would not also be able to uh, be charged with positive energy. Okay, I have evidence of Matt's theory. And this is, people are going to get mad at me. I am sorry. Will, you were talking about the last time we all met. Uh, everything yeah. was positive. Everything was on the up and up. During that phase of the tour, my mom sent me a gift. My awesome. mom sent me a white crystal that was imbued with love and positivity. No, but it was actually imbued. No, <laughs> no. That crystal, I had that crystal on hand. In what did I do with that crystal? I lost, lost it in lost transit. It. Lost <laughs> oh, when no. did lost I? It, what? Man. What? What happened? What happened after I lost it? Super Tuesday. He lost it, man. Wow. I hate to Dark say, Dark Brandon. That's you what did happened. This to us. Yeah. I kind of did. But like, I think the way the way to make sense of it is like uh, to conceptualize an uh, an object being charged with energy. It is charged by with energy by you know interacting with its environment. And I think that we can charge crystals uh, by like having them with us. And mindfully being aware of them during like moments of you know uh, intense will and 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 you know like moving towards an objective. So placebo is what you're saying. Well, yeah, but I mean that's real stuff at the end of the day. Like okay. if you're talking about like the effect of a crystal, if it is down to it, like it gives you a uh, subconscious like 10% greater confidence in your abilities or understanding or knowledge and ability to make a split second decision when like stakes are high, that adds up to le like measurable energy. I just thought this was QVC gambling, and it's like uh, you know low low cost uh, shit rocks that they're shilling so the out idea to that, like, American some of them, wine like, moms. You pay a bolt, you pay one price, and like they might be more worth more than that. Is yeah, that, like the gambling. Yeah, aspect? exactly. Okay. So like it's like baseball cards. Yeah, like, oh, I might get a Kef I might have a Ken Griffey Jr. in this one. They've gambified everything, uh, including awesome. this. But it it is like wild because. You know, you there are a lot of trends on there that I like to look at sometimes. Like I feel like I'm a like as a live streamer myself, sometimes I feel like I'm just like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going into the, I'm the hedge fund manager that's like going down the street to like the penny stock, you know, day traders and like seeing what they're up to when I see that. Cause they're fucking grinding. They're on for like, you know, yeah, they're literally grinding crystals. Yeah. That, but then tumbler. there's also like, there's a guy who's doing like ASMR sales of like iPhone cases and he fucking does this for like eight hours. And he's just like, like, just like, you know, tickling the fucking iPhone case yeah. over and over again. It's like, oh, show me the pink one again. Without like, like I don't understand how the fuck you don't lose your mind doing that uh, over well, the course of eight fucking hours I nonstop. Mean, you've lost your mind doing what you do. I know, but like they mine is more interactive at least. Mind. Mine is more interactive. There's like, you know, news to go through. There's a lot that I do and like I try I mean, to 
I, I add variety to it. Whereas you're, <laughs> if I was literally going through the same 25 iPhone cases over and over again, I would go fucking insane. Well, well they're also doing it for an effect of like $27 a day. Yeah. You know, like it's, uh, we're. <sighs> well, I think that that crystal dealer was making guapo. Yeah. <laughs> Lots. Really? Yeah. I bet every so one people of the, were buying every one of those po- let, let's see. Let's see. So how people many, were buying I don't those know things. how much they like, cost. I have no polls. idea. How much how much variance Because she price? did she did three pulls while we were watching, okay. right? Let's see how much each one of those pulls was. But how much uh how much more money could you possibly get I don't know. from one sack more than another? Maybe another- she's like maybe she's like the Robert De Niro in Casino of Crystals. I don't she know. Can't lose. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, they bring in the cooler. They yeah. bring in a cooler when she's like, <laughs> when she's pulling too much. There's like goldstone in there and stuff too. I think to like spice it up a little bit. <laughs> like, uh, where do you sell this shit? Do you sell it back to her? No, I think people just like buy it because they fucking love crystals and they think they're getting a good deal out of it. What if the Federal Reserve was buying this? Wait, yeah. like, what if they're not this is the sell Iraqi Dino in chat. Yeah. If, if they're not going to sell them, go in though, chat and ask how much one pull is. If they're not going to sell them, oh though, god, how that's is my account. Handling? But <laughs> you said how much for oh, one? Give pull. her a rose. It's only, it's only, it's only gambling if they can make the like the difference in value liquid. Like yeah. they have to be able to, they have to sell them. Yeah, I don't gambling. know. I don't know if that's like what these people are in it for. I don't think fifty-five. That's and crazy. Dollars, and that's happening. We yeah, and that's happening dollars. like all okay. dollars. USD. Yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah, shit, she's so minted. Like, That's three what I'm saying. There's more. have to be a combined three cents. There, there is more. Cost. She's going to yeah. be Hassan's neighbor. You buy that shit in bulk. Yeah. We're, ending, we're ending the podcast. We're getting a fucking <laughs> crystal washing machine, wherever the fuck that is. <laughs> yeah. No, fuck. Podcasting is stupid. Yeah, it's really We're dumb. becoming crystal dealers. There's, I, there's I, I more to two, it. There's I want to do two th- things. I want to get the crystal money. And then I, uh, it's, this is not my idea. I have to credit uh, Chewie the God on Twitter gotcha. for this one. But uh, uh, it is to, yeah. it is to sell a seed oil, uh, like a supplement that removes seed oils from your body. Like it's not real. It's it's just like you know whatever. It's 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 uh, sawdust. But you just say you know this is lab studies have has been shown to uh, reduce like the percent like the you know. The uh, indices of seed oil in your in your residual system. I had an idea. I had an idea like that. Um, me and my brother came up with this idea. I might ask you to edit it out because it is a multi billion dollar idea. Uh-huh. We'll okay. beep it. We'll so bleep you, it. You, you you get. Wait, can we put it behind the paywall? Actually, yeah. Oh yeah. We'll All put right. it. Okay, this is a good Billion spot to. Idea this is this is a good spot to to uh, stop for a brief moment, and yeah. then we're gonna transition into our our paywalled content. That's right, because we love money. We love making money. We love you know farming all the last hard earned dollars out of you, and that's why we paywalled this part. And we are gonna wash yeah. crystals when we get back. Maybe. Exactly, and and also if you have a problem with that, then um you can suck my dick. Actually, Whoa. as a matter of fact. If, if People were already like fucking complaining. They're like, I can't believe your paywalls. I'm like, it's like, bro, of you got course. A problem with it. Get some crystals you. in Bless your you. life. Get some crystals in your life. Yeah. Get some yeah. Crystal yeah. up. Are you hating outside of the crystal? Yeah. You can't even get in. You don't even have the crystal. You don't even have the gold stone. Um, anyway, and where can where can people sign on? There's a link in the description for the Patreon, and it's also what fear and pod or uh patreon.com slash fear and is where you can also join uh, the fear and heads. Or yep. we'll, we'll find a better. And it's an ampersand. Yeah. Fear and crystals. No, it's, it's not. not. I fucked up. Jeez. Fear, it's... fear and crystals in West Hollywood. Yeah. If you want the ampersand, it's behind the paywall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's there's way more sex. We're all going to get naked in a little bit. And yeah. I know you want that. We're going to ride the Sibian. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to list, yeah. I'm gonna list all the hottest. The I'm going to list the hottest 3.5 billion women in the world. Yeah. Starting off with number one. one. I'd be curious. Um, uh, Vivian Westwood. Vivian Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Callback. Brilliant. Uh, that's why I make the big paywall. Indeed, bucks. it's true. <laughs> <laughs>